Hello, hello. We are live. We are live. I'm just checking. We should be live on YouTube, Facebook page, and Facebook, but it does take a second. Hello, Hazel. Hello, hello, Heather. How are <laughs> you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Really enjoying the sunshine at the moment. It's brilliant. September sunshine is always great. Yeah, it, it is. And in the UK, especially because we get, only get sunshine in like April and September. Yeah, yeah. So we are live. I just checked. Hurrah. Hurrah, hurrah. I'm so happy Friday, everybody. Uh, whether you're watching this on whatever day or not, hope you had a good one. This is the beginning of the autumn season uh, or in where I come from in North America, we call it fall. <laughs> we just do. But we're in the UK, so we have autumn. Autumn, yes, yes. Awesome. Autumn. So, Hazel Uckert, you are a fabulous member of the Confidence Through Cabaret community, and I'm so happy that you're on here live and sharing with us. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm feeling um, surprisingly relaxed. <laughs> yes, I, I am. I think because I've done a few of these, not that many, but um, the more you do, I am realising, the more you get used to it, the more relaxed you feel. So... Um, yes, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Well, it's a pleasure. And and also, thank you for the nice little plug from yesterday. I think it was yesterday's post about, you know, when we do something and we do it again and we get some momentum, it gets easier. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. It's like anything. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm really beginning to realise that, you know, because um, I, as I said to you before, I'm so, I hadn't even gone on Facebook Um before the lockdown, you know, I hardly used my mobile phone. I didn't know anything really about social media. So it's been, you know, and, and being stuck in the house, bored, you know, I kind of stopped playing with my phone, looking through Facebook and everything's just mushroom for me, you know, over this lockdown. So in some ways it's been a really positive time because I've learned loads of new skills and uh, met loads of amazing people um, like yourself who I would never have met before. So yeah, that's been one of the benefits of the lockdown. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there's a there there's there's kind of there's there's a lot of people in this community who are very, very confident and very comfortable and, and are and are offering their services. And then there's other people in the community who are like, I'm not even ready to think about going live yet, yeah. let alone going live. Yeah. Yes. And and what I'm so happy about when we met was that you said, uh, like I want to I, I want to take action, like I'm ready to do that, and we did that, and we we had our our confidence challenge call, and now you're in, and you'll be, you know, and, and we'll we'll talk next week. Actually, I haven't told you this yet. We'll talk next week with the others in the group and kind of set our next thirty days up and whatever. But I'm so excited about your challenge because you were like, so I'm going to do something in January. And then you did it that day. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I realise I really need that sometimes. You know, I need somebody because I just sit and I'll go on and everything goes around my head. Like I said to you, I was reading books. I, I've ordered, I've spent a fortune on Amazon, you know, read, I was thinking I needed to read all these books to do something and signed up for courses. And and you said to me, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, you said, um, just do it. And I think that was so helpful to me. You know, somebody just saying that to me got me right out of my head, you know, into kind of taking action because I am pretty good at taking action. But um, often you just need that prompt or a bit of a kick up the backside. They used to say up north. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, um, sometimes we don't need permission, but we think we need permission. Yeah. 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 And all of those things are parts of of what an imposter voice would be saying so i'm not saying that anyone has imposter syndrome if they have that that need but it, it is certainly a symptom of people who do have imposter syndrome is that whole kind of like who am i to be doing this i need permission i need i need qualifications I, and you'll never be done yeah 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 no no we're never done I think the first time I realized that I went, I, I had been a coach for oh, probably about 10 years by then. And I went to a, a, a coaching kind of like freebie day to see if I wanted to go on the, their coaching course. And this is before everything was online. And, um, and I was there with two women from the BBC yeah. and they were laughing at me. They were like, what are you doing here? You don't need this. And at the end they said, instead of signing up for the course, we've made you a certificate and they made me this like hand-drawn thing and went there you go now you're a coach and I kind of went oh yeah it is because kind of <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to get at the end is a piece of paper okay we're typed but yeah, yeah. 
you know, and I'm not saying I wouldn't have learned anything, but I didn't need it in order to carry on coaching, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know it's weird. I was reading a, a little book the other day and um, it, was some, it was some quite famous author, I can't remember what her name is, she's written a few books anyway, but she she went to some conference, with, she had L Louise Hay on a pedestal, you know, that was her hero, and um, she went to this confidence and she this conference and she kept wanting to kind of go up and talk to her but she couldn't kind of do it you know and then something happened she ended up spilling her coffee over it <laughs> by accident and it was a bit like but the whole thing for me was about how you put somebody on a pedestal and you know look up to them and really you know you're just maybe one step behind them or you know everybody's different and you know but it's yeah. about recognizing your own um in a strength yeah, and a power yeah, and a worth really that's what it's all about isn't it yeah it really is and and i think um w what we we all know but we often forget in the moment is that we don't know what someone else is feeling because what you feel isn't what others see so is that person you know anxious to be in public? I mean, I I was doing, filming a podcast earlier this this morning, and I, I was saying you know I always look to the fact that Barbara Streisand, who to me is like this, I mean, icon, you know, doesn't get like has done everything in show business, and has severe stage fright to the point where they need uh, hypnotherapy to go on stage. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I just think what what we see isn't what others are really feeling. Yeah. So we don't know their journey. We don't yeah. know their, you know, we, and we compare ourselves to them, which is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Well, my daughter is actually an improvised comedy actress. And so she goes on stage a lot. And, but, you know, and she's super confident on stage, you know, and she's super funny. But of course, being her mum, I see the real Heather, you know, the real, she's called Heather too, um, you know, behind the scenes. And um, she doesn't suffer from stage fright, but she's full of insecurities. But you would never know that when she goes on stage, you know, she's really good at, at what she does. Um, years of practice and craft and everything. But, you know, it's, it, it, like you say, it's important to re realise that not what you see from someone is how they're really feeling inside. I mean, exactly. you know, before this, I was like deep breathing, feeling feeling really anxious, you know, and and uh, I'm, I'm okay now that I'm here, but it's, it, you know, all that was going on inside me before I started this. And, you know, yeah, it's it's I, really interesting, isn't it? And you, you said when we spoke earlier this week that you could just like spontaneously go on and, and it would be fine, yeah. which is why we made it for Friday. So you had, to go through that experience of stewing and yeah, preparing yeah. and yeah. and actually it's fine yeah yeah yes yes Your i've realized thing. that i do i've realized that um if i plan too much it, it, it i never follow that plan anyway so i wonder why i even do it <laughs> i've realized you know, i put some notes stuck it on my computer right i'm going to talk about this and i end up not talking about the thing i plan to talk about it's and it's always okay um you know what I've talked about, but um, I thought, why do I even bother doing this? Why do I even bother planning? You know, sometimes because I'll get to my point eventually, um, or I'll say something else that's important or you know meaningful, and it's you know. So yeah, I, I kind of feel I need to be more spontaneous and trust yourself. Yeah, trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. I thought I think a good I think a plan is good. I think yeah. for anybody who fears like they're going to dry up or whatever, you could look down at your plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I did. I, I don't usually, but I did today because I'm so interested and I and I want to share what you do. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did actually make some notes. These yeah. are my notes. Yeah. I know of things that I want to cover because I want to share what you do and I didn't want to miss that. And I knew that you and I could get talking and we could talk about, you know, all kinds of cool stuff and, and never actually get to that bit. And yeah. for people who, who fear, you know, drying up or, or they're going to forget, or they might, the ideas might not come to them because they're not, they're not extroverted and they, they need to have processed it, then a plan is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, it yeah. can be. You and I are pretty extroverted, so yeah. we're just going to say is what comes out of our mouth. Do you think I'm an extrovert? <laughs> I, think you, I think you come across as an extrovert. Oh, that's interesting. I think, so, I've, got, I think I've got both sides, you know. I think, I've, yeah, I, I've got a bit of a polarity personality thing going on, you know. Um, I, I'm married um, to a real extrovert. I mean, 
I call him a real extrovert. He is super confident. He's super out there, you know. Um, so when, if I compare myself to him, I'm, I'm, I'm a real introvert. But I think I, I can be quite extroverted, but I can equally be introverted. A bit of a pol polarity going on. So that's Okay, I can tell you why that probably is. Yeah. Um, so, so first of all, extroverts are not more confident. They just appear more confident. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes their way of expressing themselves and their pace yeah. is just because the extroverts just think out loud. That's a yeah. fundamental yeah. difference, right? Yeah. So they're just thinking out loud and that appears more confident because they seem yeah. to have all the answers right there. Yeah. But yeah. that's just because they don't think it's their head. So yeah. you could yeah. argue that introverts have more confidence because they take that time to consider yeah. and then respond. Right. Yeah. Um, also, sometimes extroverts, because I am a very strong extrovert, sometimes extroverts will use that talk to cover up or buy time mm -hmm. to gather their thoughts. Mm -hmm. So it, again, isn't necessarily more confident. Mm -hmm. But what will happen with an, an introvert is when we have trust with one another, then the introvert, so extroverts build trust like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like trust everybody right away. That's why they can chat to anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so then it's almost like prove me wrong that I shouldn't trust you rather than trust is something that's earned, which is the opposite and how introverts process it. So once we have trust and then we can have that more extroverted behavior, because you 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 know, if, you, if you're the introvert, you know that if you're talking to, to somebody that you trust, yeah. that it's going to be safe to say what you think. It's going to be safe if it doesn't come out quite right. It's going to be, you know, and that's where we get the more extroverted behavior, which is really different to extroverted preference. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, really interesting. So if you and I had never talked before, you might not feel quite so extroverted. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is so true. Yeah. So talk to me about... Well, first of all, let's talk about your book. Right, okay. Well, I've got a copy here to show you. Oh, right. No, it is, a, it's it's really a booklet. I call it a booklet, really, because um, it's um, a tiny little thing. So okay. Really thin. It hasn't got many pages. Right. Um, and the book is on person-centered art therapy. Um, and it comes with a set of cards, little task cards. It's about 60 cards all together. Um, They've got names. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But um, I wrote the book um, following, I used to work for a charity in Brighton, working with women who were sexually abused in childhood. And um, the charity, a group of women in the charity um, got some money um, to run a project. And the project was to go out into the community, running workshops for women who had been abused um, and to explore, you know, some of the issues they were facing um, and it was going to be based on art following the workshops we had art exhibitions in these different communities towns uh, we went to bristol top mess brighton you know few, mainly in the southeast and we'd have an art exhibition to raise awareness about sexual abuse now this is going back to to the year 2000 so it was just around about the millennium the money was given from the actual mind millennium fund which was like a mental health project so it was brilliant they got about ten thousand pound um i had just done a person-centered i trained as a counselor but i'd just done a person-centered art therapy course and uh, they asked me if i wanted to run these workshops well I mean, I'd sort of, I've, I've sort of run a few groups before, but it was mainly training for volunteers working on a telephone helpline. And uh, I hadn't done anything like that before, certainly not with art. I'd worked individually with people and I'd used art myself for years, going back before you even heard about art therapy. I actually started using art therapeutically myself, on myself, um, years ago, you know, probably in my early 30s. So... Yeah, I've been working with art anyway. Anyway, I did these workshops, absolutely amazing. I loved it. It was a really amazing experience. Really hard work, really hard work, but it was just a really interesting experience. The women in the workshops um, said to me that they'd love to carry it on, but, you know, there wasn't many art therapists around at the time. It was very expensive. And um, so th that was when the seed was planted that I could kind of write some sort of book to 
you know, just to help women who wanted to explore art through themselves, who couldn't afford to go to and see an art therapist. Um, and I wanted to be really simple. So it's kind of almost a mini workshop. You know, that's what I wanted to give people. But I didn't write it straight away, following the other things happened, you know, got on the way. And um, so I sort of put it, I keep saying I kind of put it in the cupboard, put this book in the cupboard and left it for about seven years. And it was something happened to my life. It, um, I had three major bereavements in the space of a year. So it was it was for long, for long. But and I actually gave up my job at the time because uh, I, I got really burnt out, you know, the, the bereavements and um, other things are happening. And I thought, right, I'm going to stop this work. And uh, so I had this space in front of me and I was grieving and I kind of got the book out of the cupboard and I thought the idea for the book, I'd worked on it a little bit, you know, it's sort of, it was, it was done, I don't know if you remember, the tiny Apple Mac computers where the screens were about that big. So it was done on one of these, you know, the printer, really basic printers. And I came up, I've still got the original, the original. Um, and But so I managed to, I actually got a small business grant at the time as well. Um, mm -hmm. So this became a focus. And so I did, I wrote the book when I was actually in a, a really, you know, hard grieving process but it gave me something to focus on yeah um yeah it, 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 i found in different times in my life things i've gone through having i think at one time i was i had prenatal depression before my son was born i took up knitting i wasn't any good at it but find doing something creative is is actually it's always helped me anyway you know move through some difficulties in my life Anyway, I published the book, but it was very much a, a prototype. You know, I kind of got 100 copies done and I put it out there, gave it to some friends, sold a few on, I think it was on eBay at the time. Um, and just to get feedback on it, to, to see whether it actually worked or not. So I went through this like little process and um, again, um, something happened. I put it back in the cupboard. So the book went back in the cupboard twice. <laughs> <laughs> and it went back in the cupboard up until lockdown and um yeah i managed to get it out again publish it again um yeah and i'm selling it and the the other exciting thing that happened was um the course that i did years ago the uk association of person-centered creative arts it sort of changes now um the director got in touch with me and she reviewed the book for me and she's put it onto the student book list so the book is actually on yeah. student book list in a place I trained at so I'm absolutely thrilled about that so that's really brilliant you know so that every is. time every time the course runs somebody might buy the book but that's fine it's just the it's just a lovely feeling to have that you know sort of because when I and when I sent it to her I have to tell you about this because this is interesting thing again about confidence you know I thought, oh, the UK director of the Association of Persons said, she's going to review my book. So I sent it to her and I had three weeks of sitting there looking at my email every day. Oh, she's going to think it's rubbish. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went through it again, this huge anxiety. And, and I thought, I don't even know this woman. And I'm giving her all this power to review my book. You know, And I talked myself into it. She was going to think it was rubbish. She got back to me and she loved it, obviously. <laughs> she said, and one of the things she said, which was lovely, was, I really want to honour your work. I can really see the amount of work you put into it, which was, oh. which was such a lovely thing, you know, for somebody to say to me. She really saw that I had actually put a lot into it, you know. So anyway, it's out there now. I'm selling it, uh, promoting it. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, but as I say, it's a very, it's, it, I wanted it to be really simple because there's a lot, there's a lot of books out there on theory of art therapy and art therapists or somebody who's training as an art therapist. There's, there's some other books that are, um, you know, going through art exercises, but this is definite, this is slight, still quite different because it is like, it could give you like a little mini course experience. That's cool. Um, so yeah, yeah. It, 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 and you can mix and match it up. You can, use it to get personal insight you can use it just to be creative so that, you know, I, I sort of tell you different ways you can use it and it, it gives you a, it's a it's a basic introduction to kind of using art therapeutically so so when you say art yeah what is your definition well 
uh, art for me is any way I suppose you express yourself. I mean, I do say in the book that, you know, if you, some people might want to dance, that's their uh, art, yeah, da dancing, movement, because people have different ways of visualizing as well. You know, I mean, I'm very visual. I see images really quickly in my head, but other people sort of sense things, um, people feel things. Um, and, and so, you know, I do, what I say in the book as well is, you know, you just don't have to paint. You could, you can, oh, are you okay, Heather? You're breaking up slightly yeah. there. Um, yeah, you can sculpt something, you know, it, it's, it's, so that art for me is about self-expression. You know, it's not necessarily painting. I paint um, and I draw, but, um, you know, other people kind of have a different meaning for art. That's how I say art. Um, yeah that makes sense yeah it's, yeah it does it does and your book is specifically talking about like drawing or painting that kind of thing or is it 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 is it is yes it is there's a journaling element to it as well you know i encourage people to journal to learn through through the artwork but um but i do say it in the book if you find that painting isn't the thing for you you know go and explore go and explore what your thing is you know whether it is dance or whether it is sculpting or working with clay or that you could apply the same principle to anything because it's about projecting you know you project yourself into your dance so you project yourself into your art or your poetry or your writing you know so um, you could use the, some of the principles especially the question part of my book um, to, to learn from whatever you do you know to that the way you express yourself does that make sense <laughs> yes it does yes it yeah. does hello martha thank you for joining us i love this too i love this too um and so and 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 obviously i'm gonna love that that you can you know your own self-expression yeah. so where does journaling come in in relation to it because i know that your new brand new shiny facebook group yes, yes. is exploring your life through art and journaling so where does the journaling come in well the journaling comes in is a, is a reflection part of a reflection process um you know um because in the book i ask questions you know there's questions to ask of your artwork or your image or you know whatever you've produced and um, the questions are specifically designed to, for you to reflect on that and explore in your journal, you know, um, about the artwork. And so you can get insight into that. Um, <coughs> so the journal is definitely about reflecting okay. as far as the book's concerned. Oh, sorry, I've got a frog in my throat here. That's okay. So then, so then that means that and I and I, I I kind of already know the answer. Or I I kind of I've heard an answer from you already. <coughs> I'm in your Facebook group, uh, and you're talking about you know where am I now, and then yeah. doing the journaling, which is your reflection, yeah. and then doing um, a, an, an expression of some some sort of you, you've done a drawing yeah. um, that that's kind of reflecting that, or you could do it vice versa. Yeah, is yes. there a difference between self-expression coming before reflection or reflection coming before self-expression or is it just preference? I think it's preference, yeah, definitely preference, yeah. I mean, some t a lot in the past I've worked straight away with image, an image, and then wrote about it. Um, and But sometimes I do it the other way around, you know, I kind mm -hmm. of write about how I'm feeling and then uh, I might draw an image that kind of goes with that, you know, but it, you can do both or you can do either you know it works quite works really well together art is a art what i love about art and image work is it cuts right through the conscious mind you know you get so much it's, it's actually really it's a very powerful um, process because you can get stuff from images that you wouldn't even realize you could get you know it's it just by asking a few simple questions um it, it it's it's very powerful yeah so but the writing and reflecting on it is is an important part of the process yeah and writing's good anyway i think writing is just good you know just to splurge things get things out of ourselves um i was reading something this morning about how how yeah i think Ju julia cameron in the artist way talks about not um not even reading back your writing, you know, just the act of doing the writing is, is therapeutic in itself. 
yeah, I can't, I, I don't, I don't enjoy reading that back when I've journaled. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But for me, there's something about using a pen as opposed yes. to typing. I can type yes. faster than I can write now, right, but I, right. I feel like it's, I don't know, somehow more honest if I use a pen. I don't know why I'm yeah. saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's something, um, it may be something primitive, I don't know, primal, I don't know, but it, yeah, because they talk about the right hand and the left hand as well, you know, being the dominant hands and that, but I think, um, I can't even read my own writing these days, <laughs> but I do just love the process of writing, yeah, yeah. It, it sort of just, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm so I mean, maybe it's just how our neural pathways were formed, because we wrote before we typed, and, you know, yes. um, certainly yeah. later millennials onwards, they, they yeah. type probably yeah. more they've they've typed more than they've written in their life for most yeah. for the most part yeah, yeah okay okay so what are um what are the morning pages because i know you talked about this a little bit in terms of your journaling is there a oh, difference right. when you journal well i just th this was a thing that came from julia cameron um which i read it years and years ago and it, I just remembered it again lately uh, she talked about getting up in the morning um and and doing and writing straight away in the morning um before you know you do anything else even you know just to help you start your day in some way to kind of maybe you know empty your thoughts onto the paper and um and, and she talked about also doing it regularly, doing it every day is really important to get to keep that momentum going, you know, to be to be more creative, to help your creative thinking. Um, I'm hopeful. I mean, in the mornings, I must have to say I'm, I'm really slow at getting up in the mornings. I kind of like a couple of cups of tea, you know, I sit and I'm a great daydreamer. I kind of sit daydreaming a lot in the morning. Um, and I but I, I, that's another thing I've challenged myself now. I'm going to stop writing in the mornings um it'll be interesting to see if all those daydreams that go around in my head kind of start coming out of the paper and so that's mm -hmm. my little challenge but i as far as what i do paint i'm an artist as well um but i tend to do my painting in the evenings because i find that's when i'm kind of most relaxed and um i just enjoy painting more in the evenings um, and I've done that for years, you know, I just seem to be more creative. I think it goes back to when my children were tiny, you know, when you're a mum, you're busy all day and you get them to bed and that's kind of my time now. So I kind of always got feel like the evenings are my time, you know, to kind of be creative or do something creative. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. So I don't think there's a, the a best time of day, you know, different people have, some people are more creative when they're relax some people want to be really energized you know to do something creative so i think everybody's different i think so too uh, and i'm just i'm just making a comment into the community it's about creating habits so yeah. um so i'm more productive in the evenings i i can work much easier in the evenings i can i can get my courses written and things yeah. um yeah. but i think for me you've just kind of triggered something in my head about if I was journaling in the morning, those thoughts come out unfiltered. Yeah. Whereas once I'm awake and I've had my caffeine and I've got my yeah. stuff going, yeah. then I would probably edit thoughts more. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. So I think you've just found my, so for those of you who, who don't know, we, we have a confidence challenge, um, which is open to anybody. It's completely free. It's, we kind of have a call, figure out what you want to work on. Um, and then, and then, um, we have a small group. So we get together every couple of weeks and just check in and, and hold each other accountable and support. Uh, and then and next week we'll start a new 30 day challenge. So my 30 day challenge, up right now is is taking terrifying action so if i want to do something i don't say no i do it yeah. which yeah. means that i have to speed up uh, my my thought process and just say yep without allowing myself to think about it too much yeah. or i'll talk myself out of it and find valid reasons why not yeah. so um so so it's been really interesting because we've you know, we've we've kind of shared that thought process. Whereas other people need to slow down and think, and and so on. Yeah. 
Um, and I, I think I'm a boy. I think I, I don't think it's that much of a challenge for me to do crazy, terrifying things. <laughs> I think it's more of a challenge for me to slow down and think. Yeah. So I think probably we're going to find on the confidence challenge when we have our call next week. And if anybody does want to join to put a comment below or send me a, a DM and, and uh, we can set that up. Uh, Cause that's how Hazel and I met. Uh, and, and, and so, but I think, um, I think that's slowing down. I might set that as my 30 days of journaling or 30 days of morning pages. <laughs> the, reason that I, the reason that I'm saying that that needs to be my thing is because I so do not want to do it. Because right, right. if you move the rocks, there's stuff underneath them, right? There's yeah, crabs yeah, and yeah, yeah. little yeah. fish and yeah, <laughs> stuff yeah, you yeah. didn't want to know. I don't want to. I don't want to see the jellyfish at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's really inter That's interesting. Yeah, that, well, that sounds really interesting. So, what have you been doing for your terrifying challenges then? <laughs> no, I'm exhausted because so there's a lot of things that. A, a lot of us, not only, but especially women do, which is the, mm, in my age and so on. And I've never been an advocate. I've never been an advocate of that at all. In fact, if there's anything that's like a, for my age, then I, I make sure I do it, even though I'm not supposed to. And I did when I was younger as well, because people were always saying, oh, you you know, you can't possibly know anything. You're too young. And now people say, oh, you're doing so well for your age. And it really pisses me off, if I'm honest. <laughs> so... Um, so, so I, I, I already have that anyway. And that's where, you know, with cabaret, I, I had some, that was kind of my last hurdle was, oh yeah, but nobody wants to, nobody wants to see this dance. Like, you know, it was that kind of like, I'm too old kind of thought. And I, I spent a long time with that, um, unpicking where that was coming from anyway. Um, so I, ha I went to, uh, and after I was in nightclub, started at midnight, stayed out all night, did like a whole DJ night, which was fabulous and fun. I wanted to go, I wanted to hear it. I wanted to be there in the atmosphere. Um, but then there was a part of me going, oh, don't be ridiculous. You could be in bed at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. Why are you doing this? You're not, you know. Um, so, and I haven't done anything like that, obviously, because we haven't been able to from, from lockdown, but, um, so I was like, you know, I, I had, a, I had a guest list and I went, yep, I'm doing it. I'm going. Um, I, I've been to, to several things where I thought, oh, I'm, I'm too tired or, oh, I don't really know if I'll like it. And I've, I've gone along. Uh, I've loved everything I've done. I've, I've really have. And my, my philosophy is, well, if I don't like it, I can leave like, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. hey, or do the thing. Um, and it started with, uh, performing cabaret, uh, four weeks ago, four weeks ago yesterday. Um, so that was fun. Amazing. I know. I, yeah, mean, was, I, I, said, I said to someone the other day, um, I was on a little group and uh, we were talking and I was kind of dressed up and she said, oh, you're looking really nice. I said, well, yeah, I'm actually going out dancing now. You know, I mean, I, I go out 10 o'clock at the weekends. I don't actually go out until 10 o'clock, yeah. uh, till two in the morning, you know, and I'm 65 yeah. and I still like going out to the pub yeah. and I love live music and I love dancing, you know, people go, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why not? Why not? I, I, absolutely, absolutely. I also did. Um, I've also done a few challenges in the last few weeks where I've sort of thought, "Ooh, I don't really want to look at that." And there was a really, a really great one that I'd, I'd always um, been interested in, but never, never done it. And, and it was just, it came up a couple of weeks ago, and it was all about money blocks and and looking at your attitude of money. And there's lots of those out there, but this particular person I really admire. And uh, I, I and I saw it all the way through the week. Like I was like, if I do day one, I'm doing the whole five days. Like I'm not this, I'm not messing around here, yeah. because I tend to dabble in and out. And I do try, and I do mean to watch the replay, and I do mean to show up live, and I do, I you know, genuine. But things happen, and you know, doesn't happen. So, so I've done all of those things. Uh, so I've I've made commitments, and I've I've stuck with them, and um. Yeah, and I've also spoken up to a few people that didn't appreciate that because I've sort of said, "Here's what I really think," you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nicely. But I've, yeah. I've said, whereas before I probably would have gone, "Oh, just let it go. It's not that big a deal," because that's the really English way to do things. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, I have adopted that habit. So I was like, "No, I'm not English. I don't have to do this, and I'm not comfortable with it. It's crossed a boundary. I'm speaking up." 
good for you. <laughs> no, I know, I know. And I, I am aware I can be scary. Um, <laughs> and Hazel's going, yeah, I can imagine. But <laughs> but I can't because I because I can be very direct. Yeah. So I was very I'm, careful, and you know I haven't ruined the relationship, but I've yeah. I've made sure that people know where things stand in terms of my boundaries and kind of yeah. gone that yeah. You know, yeah. back off. Yeah. You know, I mean most yeah most of the time I'm a fairly easygoing person, but there's been times in my life where I've seen something or something's happened that I felt I had to stick stick that out um is it all right if i tell you a little story yeah well when i was working in i was doing my counseling training um counseling placement um in brighton um and they were really hard to get a counseling placement you know it was like gorgeous and i actually managed to get a place at the brighton women's center there was um there was me and one other girl who came in as the like trainee counselors and there's four um, established counselors already working in the service and we have, when you're counselling, you have like supervision. So you have like a supervision group that you meet up. I think it was, I think it was weekly. Yeah, I think it probably was weekly or fortnightly. Um, anyway, I've been part of that project for a year. And um, this, no, I've been about six months. And uh, so I've been in for a while, you know, and it was supposed to be a very co cooperative kind of working group. Everybody was included and consulted. Anyway, what happened? One week, the supervisor, challenged one of the experienced counsellors um on something that she was work you know her work with a client and that was part mm -hmm. of their job was to challenge somebody you know challenge okay. if they, they weren't looking at their own issues or whatever she, and she didn't like it and the whole session this whole supervision session was taken up with this challenge you know this conflict between the supervisor the, the next week fortnight when we went in there was a new supervisor. So the four, the four counsellors had got together and sacked the supervisor. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Without wow. consulting me or the other trainee, the other trainee. And um, I was just completely shocked, you know. It was, and that was a huge dilemma for me because at the time, you know, I was really worried. I thought, oh, if I speak out here and say, I don't think this is okay. You know, we haven't been consulted. We built up a relationship with the supervisor. Um, you know, what's going on? What, why wasn't it processed? Why wasn't this, con you know, anyway. They, it was really hard. It was really hard because the four counsellors, the, the new supervisor didn't know what was going on. She was completely, you know, she did a good job holding the process. But um, they, I was worried I was going to lose my placement as well if I spoke mm -hmm. up about this and said, I actually don't think this is okay, you know. Um, but I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't let it go. But And it was really hard. It went on for weeks. I mean, they really tried to silence me. You know, they, they would they didn't want to discuss this issue. They felt that what they did was fine. And uh, I took it quite a long way. I actually it took it outside the group in the end. I took it to the management committee of the women's centre. In the end, I got acknowledgement. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. I all I wanted was an acknowledgement that, you know, we we needed to be consulted about a major decision. That was part of the ethos of the women's organisation. So it was a principle I felt very strongly about. Um, and I'm quite proud that I did that because, you know, it was important. It was kind of, yeah, I, I, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you. I think, I think it's a good story for, you know, you know, we, we all have principles yeah. and, and we shouldn't need to compromise those yeah, or yeah, back down yeah, from those. Yeah. Yeah. unless there is a damn good reason like yeah. someone else's needs are greater yeah. but there yeah. has to be that acknowledgement of yeah. them saying well, this is what's happened yeah. yes. because what they yes. haven't done is considered that you had a relationship and you had built trust and you yeah. you know had an understanding with that other person and now you've got to start that again they haven't considered was that okay for you yeah. you know because yeah. that might have been difficult for some people yeah. to start all yeah. over with somebody else and then the fear of losing your placement and I think I think there, you know, we all have a line where we'll say, "Oh no, 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 you've you've crossed it," and I'm and I'm I'm and that and that's the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but it's where that line is. And, you know, boundaries are something I'm, I, I don't think I've ever done an interview without saying the word boundaries somewhere. Um, you know, and I, I think, I think because it is so important to know where those are. Yes. Not to yes. wait until they're trampled on before yes. you find out. Yes. yes, really important. And um, when I worked with, you know, women who have been abused, I mean, that was a huge issue all the time, boundaries. You know, a lot of the women, you know, just have no boundaries. They have no boundaries. Um, and, um, yeah, it came up time and time and time again. And the whole organisation was actually run by it was a grassroots organization so everyone in the organization had experienced abuse and so the boundaries oh we, you know one of the things we had to work on in the organization was setting boundaries everywhere you know mm. boundaries everywhere it was really important so we everybody knew exactly where they were you know you knew what your context you were working in, what you could do, what you couldn't do. It was a huge part of my work, actually, was setting boundaries in within the organisation. Um, so, yeah, boundaries are really important. Well, and, you know, I think particularly when, when you're talking about the environment that you were in, where abuse is, is present and then yeah. and, and that's a given, then automatically everybody there's boundaries have been trampled yeah. on. Yes. At some point. And yes. unless we go through that exit, and that's important for all of us, but most especially if our boundaries have been trampled, unless we go through that exercise of understanding where our boundaries are. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that they do it with young primary school children. You know, they talk yeah. about like, it's your body and where's your boundaries yeah. and yes. people don't get to touch you. And, yeah. you know, people don't get to be mean to you. And there's like, yeah. you know, kind of classroom, you know, rules and things. Yeah. Um, and then it then it is never spoken about again. <laughs> Sort of yeah. disappear. Yeah, yeah. And if if others in our lives have let us down on upholding our boundaries and, and supporting us through it, then it can be really hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is so important to know where those boundaries are and to know, you know, wh where you have to step in with your principles and exercise those. Absolutely. And it is very often a principled thing, you know, like you yeah. said in in your um, story, you it's it's about you just wanted acknowledgement that's yes. that's all yes. i want yes. i've had a, yes. i've had a few yes. uh, i'm a, i mean i train people in how to give feedback and receive feedback and all that kind of yes. stuff so i know how to do it properly so i'm not i i didn't like you know it was very assertive and very considered and you know but i still uh, i i still there are people who don't like conflict and yes. so i've still ruffled a few feathers because they would have rather me not said anything yes. Yes. So it yes. doesn't matter how nicely or how carefully you put it, they were not okay with yeah. kind of being effectively called out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that I particularly like conflict, but like you say, when when you, put, you feel like a principle is at stake, I kind of feel I have to speak up. That's just something yeah. within me, it's the way I am. Yeah. And, you know, there's been a f not many times I've had to do that in my life, but, um, the, yeah, there's... I've been in groups where people have been scapegoated and that's not a nice experience. And usually I'm the one that's there, you know, trying to be on their side because, you know, to be scapegoated in a group is a horrible thing to happen oh, to you. It hasn't happened yeah. to me, but I've seen it happen. Um, so, yeah. But, and that's when I get scary is when someone else is being scapegoated. Then it's yeah. like, oh, okay, here's the deal. Yeah. And then yeah. there's a lean in and you should run. Because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get very honest. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. But so, so what is next for you, Hazel? What's so you started your Facebook community, which I'm so excited. Um, you've got your book out there, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're selling your paintings, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah, next? I just sold one yesterday, yeah. <laughs> it's been really quiet this year, and obviously, we, the, I sell them in a gallery locally, um, and um. You know, I'm just an amateur painter, but I have actually sold about a thousand paintings since I started painting. Not for huge amounts of money. Yeah, I know. I've been doing it about 10 years. And um, yeah, so it's great. I love that, you know, the fact that my paintings are hanging all around people's walls in the country. <laughs> it gives me a great mm. thrill, considering I'm just an amateur painter. Um, when I moved to Weymouth, I met this amazing man. Um, he was born in London and he was a fantastic. He, he, he painted these really weird, um, 
they're, they're like ruins of a ship scenes, you know, and um, you'd have the sea, the sea in the background, but he had these like weird with little figures. He was amazing painter. He, he sold his for thousands of pounds. I used to meet him in the street and he'd say, look, Hazel, I've just sold a painting and he, he'd have the money in his pocket. <laughs> so it was 3,000 pounds in his pocket. It was really funny. Such a character. But I didn't realise, but he actually painted flowers occasionally. Um, but he did this really sort of almost, um, oh, 60s style dreamlike abstract type or another they, they were amazing i mean he didn't like painting but he, he did occasionally do them for somebody you know somebody asked him to do one so it was him that actually started me off which was great you know he said um you yeah, know why don't you you know paint, paint, try painting with flowers you know and i thought oh, i'll give it a go you know and he gave me a few little tips and things so and when i took the first one into a local it's a, it's not a gallery it's a kind of craft collector but we have like a shop and there's knitters in there there's glass workers you know it's really great yeah. we, we it's like a little collective and um when i saw the first one i was absolutely thrilled to bits you know it was a great thrill to sell that very first piece i still get a thrill every time i sell one um you know, but these are so these are these are um what you're talking about yeah. um that you've been doing for a long time are yeah. such strong acts of confidence you know yeah. putting your art out there for others to see yeah putting your book out there and sharing it to friends because yeah. I've written before and I do not want friends to read it. You know, it's like, <laughs> I would rather strangers read it and give me their opinion, but, yeah. but I do not want friends to, it's just uncomfortable for me. And so what you're, for me, what you're doing is just such strong acts of bravery. Oh, thank you, Heather. That's not, I never saw, I never saw it that way, really. The book I felt more so, when I started with the painting, yes, I probably did feel like that. You know, I remember putting this painting in and um, looking at it, thinking, oh my goodness, you know, that who's going to buy that? <laughs> Hanging it up, you know, nobody's going to buy it. it. It went really quickly. It's funny though, often the paintings that I spend more time on, some I, some I can do really quickly, others I'll spend weeks on. You know, I keep going back to it a little bit of this. And the ones I really love often are the ones that actually, um, take longer to sell which is odd it's quite it interesting it, again i think is it because i overdo with them because you know, even in paintings there's an energy about them you know you're putting your energy into it and if i do the, the quick ones seem to kind of sell quicker so again i think i may overdo my painting work you know sometimes it's it's yeah. it's interesting that isn't that is an interesting thing to to think about is mm. the energy that you've put into it yeah, yeah. it others will will receive it because yeah. it is literal energy so yeah. Yeah. um so maybe there is something in that of you know kind of maybe they enjoy maybe your target audience enjoys something more light and bright and breezy yeah. kind of a yeah. feel yeah 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 it's even funny. if the thinking it, isn't of that yeah. so maybe there's something in that yeah it is it is i only noticed this lately because i did a little mini i'm in a little group and we had like a festival week and they they are I, I sort of said, oh, I'll do a painting workshop. I've never shown anybody how to paint, you know, these paintings, flower paintings. But I, I realised I have developed a little process of how I do it. So that was quite easy. So I did it a whole week, every day, just, you know, half an hour. And I only spent 10 minutes every day showing them how to put these, you know, how to do these flowers. And I, by the end of the week, I'd created this painting in probably a quarter of the time I normally spend on them. And it was it was just as good as any one that I'd spent a week on, a whole week on, which was really interesting. And I thought, yeah, maybe I am overdoing those paintings too much, you know. So I'm, I'm, that's another little lesson lately that I've learned. Okay, so if we were to think about, um, you know, I mean, cabaret is, is, is typically a small stage environment. So if you had, so you could have a comedian, you could have a singer, you could have a dancer, you could have, yeah. you know, um, uh, any number of, of things, yeah. any one of those you could relate to as if, if you saw somebody who had over rehearsed it. Yeah. And so they were yeah. going through the motions of singing the song because they sing the song. I've seen many very professional, very, you know, 
multi-millionaire um, bands that just don't connect with their audience. They're just there and they play the song that they yeah. recorded for the album and it's, yeah. you know, and then there's the ones that connect with, with yeah. their audience because it's not over-rehearsed. It's for that audience. Yes. Um, it would be the same with dancing. You know, I've seen yeah. dancers where it's all perfectly polished, but they're just, yeah. it's kind of boring yeah. 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 because it's yeah. exact. Yeah, yes, so, yes. And of course, there is an audience, and this is beyond cabaret because ballet would never, well, it, could, it would be in cabaret, but it, a, a full ballet would be on a big stage. So, by definition, wouldn't be cabaret. That That is perfect, um, or as perfect as they can make it. And same with things like opera, again, a big stage. But yeah. if you think about like cabaret and you think about the little acts, all the comedians that, that go on to those stages hoping to become Jerry Seinfeld, then they would have to seem like it's the first time they've told that yes. story or said it. Yeah. 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 And maybe there's a parallel and I'm fully making this up right now because I haven't <laughs> thought it through because I'm an extrovert. It's all coming out of my mouth. And these are my thoughts. Um, is maybe there is an equivalent of over rehearsing mm -hmm. in yeah. drawing and painting. Yeah. I think, I think I'm beginning to sort of really realize that certainly for myself lately. So I'm going to really, think about that the next few paintings I do um you know that I'm actually going to again the little I think that's going to be my theme for the year spontaneity spontaneous spontaneous and quickly I think yeah or certainly for the rest of this year that I'm going to um do that in all areas of my life be more spontaneous and do things right. yeah quickly well, it is certainly working for you now because you 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 made a Facebook group in a day yeah, and now yeah. you're up there and you've got people and you, you're oh, doing wow. lives and yeah. I'm loving what you're doing with oh, your exercises you. and, and uh, I'm going to follow along with you and you have inspired yeah. my next 30 days of journaling and I'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. Um, I'm committing to 30 days at a time because then if I don't like something, I can change yeah. it or, what, yeah. or I can learn from it. It gives me yeah. enough time to, for it to become a habit and yeah. and reflections and then yeah. i can decide what i do with it next yeah. um, but i love i think spontaneous and quick and not over rehearsing is is yeah. a is a very worthy one and i'm so happy that you're in the confidence yeah. challenge with us because i get to follow that journey with you for the rest of the yeah. year to, to see yeah. where that goes Brilliant. and to share with the others as well yeah i can't wait to meet them yeah Brilliant. yeah Brilliant. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. So we will do that next week. In the meantime, if anybody else wants to join us, you are more than welcome to. If you want to go live, uh, it is, it's safe, right, Hazel? Nothing absolutely. bad happens? Absolutely great. <laughs> you're, you're not scary at all. <laughs> it's, I love when people say, oh, I'd love to be able to go live. And I go, come with me. It'll be okay. I'll, yeah, I'll keep you yeah. safe. And they go, no, I'm fine. Yeah. I've really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Well, you didn't need me at all. So I'm, I'm feeling like a complete fraud at this point, but I have loved chatting with you. Um, it's 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 so much fun. I love your stories. I adore your work. Oh, I think you. art and you is fantastic. Oh, um, I, I certainly want to know more about it. So please bring your book with you to the next Confidence Challenge when we have our call, because I, I want to know more about it and I, I, I want to share that with others. Oh, thank you. Where can people find out more about your work or your book, or how can they get in touch? Um, with you? I mean, obviously, no, I, this is out in the community, so you can you can contact Hazel in in the in the conference yeah, recovery. Yeah, yeah, Where exactly. else are you? Yeah, well, I'm I'm on Amazon. Um, the art of you, self discovery through art. Um, I'm on Etsy. Um, oh, I forgot the name. Art you, capital letters. But I'm on Instagram at discover art of you and you can find the links on there so that's my main platform instagram at the moment okay so this is you on amazon the art of you yeah and my that's obviously my surname yeah that's your book yeah and then and then what was etsy again um etsy is um rt a r t y u just r t u yeah and um instagram which you can kind of get a, a flavor of um, of the book more on Instagram is uh, discover art of you. <laughs> yeah, discover art of you. Yeah, on Etsy. Yeah. On, on on Instagram, I mean. On Instagram. I think I'm, on, I'm on Facebook as well. <laughs> I'm everywhere. <laughs> you are everywhere. You are brilliant. Um, what happened to that? Uh, discover art of you. I don't know why that. 
of you. There we go. Oh, thanks. That's yeah. right, right? That's it, yeah. That's Instagram, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Oh, yeah. So, um, Hazel Uckert, <laughs> thank you for being my guest. Oh, thank you, Heather. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go onto my Facebook, my group now, and do another session. <laughs> Yay! I'm excited. I will. Um, I, I will watch it and, and follow the exercise. I haven't done the, the first exercise, which was about journaling and then and then creating, expressing in some yeah, sort of yeah. drawing ish thing, well, whatever you want. Yeah, wherever. You, yeah, just where you are now. Yeah. Yeah, where you are now. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Thank oh, you for thank being you in the cabaret community. It's thank fabulous you. to have you here. Yeah. Thanks for the challenge. Really brilliant. No, oh, I'm so glad. I'm I'm so glad. Once once we had our conversation, and I've made a few notes of of, of questions for you for your next thirty days. So, um, right. including spontaneity. So, I, I I for those of you who who aren't part of the challenge yet, you I don't assign you things. I kind of go, well, let's play with these a few of these and see what happens, and yeah. and and then you set your own one. Yes, join the challenge, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love, I want to keep it small because I like it yeah. to be, you know, really, really intimate. And it is as much for me as for everybody else because we all keep each other accountable. I just, I'm done with not taking action. I'm done with talking about it. And you are such an inspiration because you took your action like that day. <laughs> Didn't you say do it that day? I did. <laughs> I have no power, Hazel. <laughs> I'm a good little girl. I do as I'm told. <laughs> Compliant. But you did not need permission. None of you need permission. Just do what you want to do. You don't yeah. you don't even need to be in the challenge. You you yeah. you always have permission. Give yourself permission to do yeah. what you want yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Lovely. Oh, thanks, Heather. Thank you, Hazel. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, you too. I'm Heather Jean. Have a great weekend. Um, you can check out the podcast this week. It was fabulous. You can check out the challenge. You can check out, just Google Confidence Recovery and you'll find everything. I am reminding you that it is your body. It is your world and it is your stage. Take up space this weekend. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.